welcome to raw online so today we are going to deal a very important topic as an emergency physician in your er you are going to get cases with presentation as chest pain right what is the most common thing what we do as a chest pain is we rule out any emergency diagnosis right rather than a most common diagnosis we'll be looking into any emergency and most dangerous diagnosis in the first place so by history and clinical examination we would like to find out whether that's a cardiac emergency basically i'm speaking about myocardial infarction right you do take an ecg and if it warrants then you'll go for an echo or a tropoi also then you'll rule out a myocardial infarction right basically most of our evaluation ends there and we usually give a proton pump inhibitor maybe an omeprazole pantoprazole and we'll discharge the patient right that's what we do in a er but you need to understand from the spectrum of just a gastritis towards a myocardial infarction there are a lot of other diagnoses which a patient can have as far as chest pain is concerned right can your patient have aortic dissection with a with a normal ecg yes it's possible so can your patient have any other esophageal pathology cardiac pathology lung pathology uh, with a normal ecg yes still it's possibility so here we are going to handle a very gray area that is a mediastinitis which is going to come to your mind in the very last when you have ruled out all the major things right but we need to have a basic idea of what is this mediastinitis right we'll proceed with this understand that mediastinitis includes a variety of thoracic infections right that occur in a confined place called mediastinum right so where is that mediastinum the boundaries are that it's between the sternum anteriorly and the spine posteriorly and above the diaphragm and below the thoracic outlet so this region is called as the mediastinum right from the sternum to the spine and above the diaphragm and below the thoracic inlet this is called as a mediastinum the diagnosis treatment prognosis all is determined by what exactly you are handling it let be the on the location and the etiology so this particular mediastinum can be divided anatomically into superior and inferior compartments okay so as in the previous slide you can see that this is where is the superior compartment right at the level of sternal angle we put a faint line and this divides the mediastinum into superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum and again you will be able to see that the inferior mediastinum is divided into anterior and middle and posterior mediastinum right the layers are from the sternum to the pericardium we call as anterior right and here in the pericardium we call middle mediastinum and from the pericardium towards the spine is called as posterior mediastinum so all these three things come under inferior mediastinal category okay at the level of sternal angle you draw a faint line that divides the mediastinum into superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum this inferior mediastinum is further classified into anterior mediastinum middle mediastinum and posterior mediastinum okay so here so the anterior mediastinum is nothing but from the post of the sternum to the anterior pericardium and the middle is the intra pericardial cavity that's the intra pericardial contents basically the heart and the blood vessels posterior is bounded anteriorly by the posterior pericardium to the spine this is called as posterior mediastinum and the pleural cavities are the lateral boundaries for each of this mediastinal contents so here again this is a mediastinal angle from there a faint line is drawn and this is going to be your superior mediastinum anything below that above the diaphragm is called as the inferior mediastinum and this inferior mediastinum is divided into this pocket that is the an anterior inferior mediastinum that is from the sternum to the pericardium right this pericardium is the middle mediastinum from the pericardium till the spine is called as the posterior part of inferior mediastinum okay so now what are the basic contents of this each mediastinum okay so in the superior mediastinum you have the thymus trachea esophagus and thoracic duct so any issue with your thymus or any tracheal issues may be a burn injury of the trachea maybe the patient was into a, a burn area or the esophagus the canidal infection which has gone in for perforation or any instrumentation endoscopy related issues all these things which can affect the esophagus can cause superior mediastinal issues an issue with the thoracic duct all these things are the organs present in the superior mediastinum okay thymus trachea thoracic duct and esophagus the 3 t and 1 e okay the 3 t and 1 e this is how you remember this and what are the arteries there it's aortic arch basio cephalic trunk 
and left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery. These are the arteries of the superior mediastinum. What are the veins? The superior vena cava and brachiocephalic vein and thoracic duct. All these things are the veins and lymph vessels of superior mediastinum. And the nerves are the vagal nerve, left recurrent laryngeal nerve, cardiac nerve and phrenic nerve. So, why this contents is important is that whenever you are handling an issue of a particular structure, so let it be a thymus issue or it be a thoracic duct issue, whenever you are handling an issue of that particular content, you should know which arteries can be affected, you should know which nerve you need to look into, okay. Or indirectly, when you see a patient with these kind of nerve issues, you need to look into whether these contents are affected retrospectively, okay. So, this is why you need to know the relation, relationship between the organs and the nerves. Coming to the inferior mediastinum, as we already mentioned, the inferior mediastinum is divided into anterior, middle and posterior, right. So, the contents of the anterior mediastinum is the thymus, as well as middle is the heart and the pericardium because it is the pericardial cavity basically and posteriorly it is the esophagus again. So, if you see significant arteries is there in the middle because it is the pericardium per se. So, all the arteries which start or end will be there in the middle mediastinum, the major ascending aorta, the aortic root the pulmonary trunk and the branches and pericardiophrenic arteries and veins, okay. Posteriorly, you have the branches of iota and the thoracic iota itself and branches of thoracic duct and thoracic duct itself. And the veins, azygos vein, hemiazygos and thoracic duct, superior vena cava, azygos, pulmonary, pericardiophrenic. And the nerves, phrenic now is present in the middle mediastinum and vagal now which is present in the posterior mediastinum, okay. These are the contents of mediastinum.